and welcome to this edition of Reporters. He's a former traffic policeman who says he was reborn as Jesus Christ. And Sergei Torops also one of the people the Russian government's targeting in its crackdown on sects. Torop says God appeared to him in 1991. That convinced him to swap his uniform and buzz cut for preacher's robes and a long beard. The founder of the Church of the Last Testament is now head of a 4,000-strong community high in the mountains of Siberia. Torop's followers give up modern lives and possessions to live in handmade wooden villages and work the land. But critics say they're being cheated and brainwashed. Moscow's joining forces with the Russian Orthodox Church to wage war on the estimated 1,000 sects that sprang up after the fall of the Soviet Union. Xavier Luise went to Siberia to meet the man who says he's the Messiah. Let's go. Time for Christmas, man. Veselin is wearing his feast day robes. See how beautiful it is out here. Today, this remote corner of Siberia is celebrating Christmas. And for Veselin, along with all the other members of this sect, Christmas comes on January the 14th. Men, women and children ignore the fact that the temperature is minus 20 degrees Celsius as they eagerly present themselves a benediction. They've been promised a Christmas gift to end all others. A meeting with Jesus himself. People have come from villages all around. First we purify ourselves with this blessed water. And then we go up to the monasteries. Everyone here is a member of the Church of the Last Testament. The sect is thought to be one of the biggest and most influential in Russia. These people believe that not only is Jesus alive, but that he came back to earth almost 50 years ago and is now living among them. Enough to make them want to walk for miles through the knee-deep snow in the Siberian taiga. Christmas is the birthday of Jesus, our teacher. For us, it's the beginning of a new era. A new Christmas that opens the road to a new future for all humans. At the end of that road, after several hours of walking, the sight they've been waiting for. Seated under a cedar tree, Jesus Christ in flesh and blood. You men are all very different. Some are more advanced than others. That's why only a small elite group will lead humanity to salvation. Sergei Anatolievich Torop says his spiritual rebirth came in 1991 when he saw God. That's when he became Vissarion, known to his followers as the teacher. With the Soviet Union crumbling, Vissarion's promises of a new life in a utopian society spread from village to village. He established his new community in a remote spot in the Siberian mountains, cut off from the modern world. This part of Siberia in the geophysical sense, should be spared the radical changes that are to hit the planet. We aim to start up a new society from here. This is where the foundations of our common future should be built. The creation of a united, global community depends upon this. And to construct his utopia, Vissarion thought big, cutting down a large section of the forest to build the simple wood dwellings his followers would live in. There are now more than 4,000 people living in around 20 villages. Most of them are well-educated, many are from foreign countries. All have chosen to leave behind a life of mod cons for a simpler existence, following the guidance of their guru, Viserion. The main tenets? To respect nature and work with your hands. Viserion was an architect in his native Bulgaria. Now he collects water from a spring, his house is lit by solar energy, and he grows his own vegetables in a small kitchen garden. 
Неужели это лучший образ жизни, чем здесь, где у меня вокруг... Here we live better than in the city. I am among my brothers and sisters. We sort our problems out among ourselves. They're ready to help me out if I'm in need. We support each other, and I can tell you, that gives you a wonderful feeling. Here, the needs of the many outweigh those of the few. Nobody is paid for their work, however. Members of the sect have an allowance equivalent to around 10 euros a month to buy basic supplies that top up their vegetarian diet. Vices, which include alcohol and tobacco, are outlawed. Veselin met his wife here. Their simple life revolves around Viserion, reading his teachings and praying. In this book we learn how to live the right way. The Last Testament tells us how to live right down to the smallest details. We look to the teacher when we have questions. In general, these have to do with the family and social relationships. And there are thousands like Julia and Veselin, convinced by Viserion's teaching to relocate to this otherwise deserted land. Children are born here at a rate much higher than the Russian average, and the community is adapted with its growing size. The Russian Orthodox Church, however, sees the expansion as dangerous. Its closest parish is 80 kilometers away, and here, Vissarion as the new messiah is far from welcome. In the Bible, Jesus said that others would come in his name, and that's what this is. He's using those people's naivety and their good faith to take their money. This priest knows the Church of the Last Testament well. He's already taken in several of its former members, disenchanted with Vissarion's new society. The danger is that he could easily give these people orders, like to take up weapons, for example, or to do other bad things to serve his own interests. Obviously, for that reason, he's a threat to them all. Four thousand kilometers to the west, in Moscow, we met one of Vissarion's former followers. Eighteen years ago, Maria Karpinskaya joined the sect. She even appeared in one of his promotional videos. Look, there it's me. This film was shown in rural villages to recruit new members. It shows Vissarion performing baptisms in Israel. Almost two decades on, Maria is convinced no longer. She says she was deprived of her freedom. After two years in Siberia, she left. For her, the egalitarian society she dreamed of was, in fact, an authoritarian nightmare. Life started to get very hard, and little by little our life of freedom turned into an iron-fisted regime, a dictatorship. New rules were brought in, certain products were banned, there was rationing. As I see it, this man plays with people as if they were dolls. Back in Siberia, and it's time for children to go back to school. The school mainly follows the national curriculum, but it includes elements described by some as a form of mental conditioning. This morning, these children are taking a class in understanding the world. What happens at Christmas when it's our teacher's birthday, when we unite ourselves with him? What is it that fills our souls? Now, draw the light that emanates from our teacher's body. Yeah, that's right. This allows the children to see the world the right way. It trains their understanding of it, their relationships with other people, the earth and nature. For me, obviously, this is the truth about the world and its population, and that's what I try to give to the children. Personal touches added to the state curriculum include daily prayers and learning the scripture written by the teacher, Vissarion's Last Testament.
We need to seek the truth. Yes, that's right. And only faith can help us. And as well, Alina, you told us that to find the truth, we shouldn't just read the Last Testament, but put it into practice every day. Yes, because just reading doesn't change anything. These children were born within the sect and know little about the outside world. The guiding light in their lives is the voice of the teacher. But the future doesn't look bright for Vissarion and the thousands who follow his last testament. Moscow is set upon breaking up the sects that sprang up after the fall of the USSR. The Russian Orthodox is supporting the government. And their joint efforts could well spell the end of this little kingdom in the Siberian mountains. That's it for this edition of Reporters. You can watch it again on our website. Until the next time, bye for now.